Thank you very much, uh, Cristiano. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. Uh, I'm very happy to be here at uh, the University of Coimbra at SESH uh, to share with you some of my recent research on populist attitudes in Portugal and especially happy to be able to do so within the framework of the UNPOP project led by Cristiano. Okay, so basically what I'm going to share with you this afternoon is an overview of the studies that have been carried out in Portugal on the topic of populist attitudes. First, of course, I'm going to define what we mean by populist attitudes. Then I'm going to try to convince you why the Portuguese case is a relevant and interesting case to study populist attitudes, the demand side of the populist phenomenon. And then I will share with you the results of some research in, what, in which I was involved trying to answer some uh, critical research questions regarding the nature and the impact of populist attitudes in the country. So, well, the study of populist attitudes has to do with uh, shifting the focus of research uh, on populism and uh, looking at the other side of the coin. What does this mean? It means that until 10, 12, 15 years ago, 99% of papers, books focusing on populism would focus on uh, political parties and political elites, the uh, supply side of the phenomenon. Uh, but in the last 10 years, uh, um, scholars understood that would be interesting and relevant to try to understand uh, 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 to what extent uh, 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 we could find uh, 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 the populist uh, ideary, the populist the ideology, even if ideology is not a good word to, 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 to use in this, uh, in this context, and I'll try to explain why later on, uh, to what extent we could find populist ideas within the citizenry as well, in order to understand the mismatches or the matches between the demand side, citizens and voters, and the supply side, uh, political parties, political leaders, political candidates. The study of political attitudes, as uh, 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 I already had the opportunity to mention, uh, of course stems from uh, the, current, the uh, currently majoritarian understanding of populism as uh, an, a theme-centered ideology. What does this mean? It means that I, uh, populism is understood as a relatively poor and relative incomplete ideology that will need, of course, to find links with other ideologies in order to uh, uh, present to the citizenry uh, uh, a complete outlook of, of, of the world. But uh, 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 in itself, populism can be seen as a set of very stable ideas about what the political system is, what the political sphere is, and what the political sphere should be. Okay? And within this uh, ideational approach, uh, the definition that was proposed by a Dutch political scientist, Kaz Muda, has been uh, quite influential. And the definition uh, states, populism is a thin-centered ideology, a poor ideology, an incomplete ideology, that considers society to be fundamentally divided between, on the one hand, the poor, the pure people, and uh, on the other hand, the corrupt uh, elite or the inept elite. Okay, and populist populism calls for popular sovereignty uh, via advocating the placement of the general will, the volonté générale of Rousseau, at the center of the political process. Well, this means that we have here several dimensions that put, placed together, put together, uh, uh, allows to uh, arrive to this uh, um, minimal definition of populism as an ideology. First, we have this uh, uh, component of people centrism. What does this mean? The idea that uh, people, common people, other than the elite, are uh, 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 in general terms good are in general terms always right. They are, are homogeneous in the sense that there are no, no, not different ways of being part of a specific population and in the sense that there is only one way of being part of the good people. Okay? So that's why populism is in its, in its essence 
quite illiberal in the outlook it has of uh, society. And uh, people centrism also uh, uh, states and proposes that uh, people should be at the center of the political decision making processes. The second component is the component of, uh, component of anti elitism. This means uh, the idea that political elites uh, do not represent uh, the interests of the people. Either because they don't care, they are alienated, they just care uh, about their own issues and their own goals, or because they are corrupt, or uh, in some cases they are not competent, competent not able to represent uh, uh, and uh, take uh, um, decisions and make decisions on pressing issues. Uh, in, for populists, people are uh, is seen as a homogeneous and monolithical uh, category, and the elites are seen as well as uh, homogeneous, uh, homogeneous as well. This means that all members of the people are good, all members of the elite are bad. This is at the core of uh, this uh, definition of populism. A third element is uh, this element of uh, the claim for popular sovereignty. What populists uh, defend is that we should uh, abandon the traditional processes of political decision making in representative democracies and uh, replace them with those that are believed uh, by them to be more effectively uh, um, uh, uh, in accordance uh, to the wishes of the people. Uh, this of course means more power to new political forces, to populist political forces, populist political parties on the one hand, and in some cases tools and instances of uh, direct democracy being used more often in order to actually grasp the volonté générale, to measure the true will of, of the people. Of course, uh, uh, populism as defined uh, um, like we are, going, uh, we are defining here it uh, now is uh, quite poor in terms of as a political a political ideology because it does not uh, uh, open pathways to deal with specific uh, political issues or specific societal issues and that's why um, a pop uh, populism as an ideology needs to find uh, a, a partner ideology in order to fulfill it's uh, uh, the substantive uh, um, uh, rooms uh, that it, 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 it lacks uh, uh, um, fulfillment. Uh, that's why we can talk about right-wing populism as well as uh, left-wing populism, as well as, uh, in some cases, more rare in the universe, in nature, center populism as well. Okay? Okay, so in more, uh, leaving more theoretical aspects and focusing now on more empirical or practical aspects, how do we study uh, uh, populist attitudes? How do we measure uh, populist attitudes? Well, even if this stream of research is fairly recent, 10, 12, 15 years at most, the fact is that over the last decade we have uh, had a series of populist part, uh, attitude scales being uh, offered, uh, being created and tested. Uh, um, in, in the, uh, those scales can be used by us in uh, serving research. Okay, Among, uh, amongst those uh, scales, the one that is most widely uh, used and one uh, which also has the best uh, uh, psychometric qualities, the most robust scales, or one of the most robust scales, was the scale created by uh, Ackerman and colleagues and published in their 2014 paper. This is actually the scale that is used in all the Portuguese focused research that we are going to discuss later on. Okay? And this uh, specific scale is composed of six items that aim to actually measure, to operationalize the three components of uh, populism uh, as an ideology that we just discussed. People centrism, uh, anti-elitism and the defense of the <coughs> new ways of putting the volonté générale at the center of the political process. The first one, the first item uh, reads uh, politicians in the Portuguese parliament need to follow the will of the people. The second one reads, people and not politicians should make our most important policy decisions. Third uh, item, 
the political differences between the elite and the people are larger than the differences among the people. Here we can find very clearly the idea of homogeneity of the people and the difference between people and the elite. This Manichaean uh, uh, perspective of politics and society which is central in uh, 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 the populist uh, ideology. The fourth item, I would rather be represented by a citizen than by a specialized politician. This is clear-cut anti-elitism, of course. Uh, the fifth, electoral officials talk too much and take too little action. And the last but not the least, what people call compromise in politics is really just selling out one, one's principles. Okay, so populists do not like uh, uh, compromise, but they, they do not like negotiations because uh, um, for populists, reality is either black or white. There are no shades of gray in which uh, we can uh, um, agree upon and still be uh, reasonable. Okay, so why should we bother to study populist attitudes in Portugal? Actually, Portugal is a very intriguing and a very interesting case for the study of populist attitudes as, because as you know, until 2019, it was depicted in the international literature and even in the international uh, media uh, as a sort of safe haven in which the populist political forces, especially radical right uh, uh, populists, were not able to, to thrive, to succeed and to achieve parliamentary uh, representation. Of course, this changed in 2019, in the end of 2019, with uh, the election of André Ventura, Chega's leader, to the Assembleia da Republica. And as we will see in a minute, uh, the majority of the studies on populist attitudes in Portugal focuses on this pre-Chega uh, context. And they, they try to understand to what, to what extent the failure in the supply side the fact that until 2019 it was not possible uh, for uh, populist candidates and populist political parties to succeed has something to do with the specific nature of the demand side, the specific nature of populist attitudes in the country. And so far we were able to at least try to provide an answer to the following questions. The first one is uh, how widespread were populist attitudes in Portugal? This question is relevant, of course, because one, actually a very feeble hypothesis, but one of the hypotheses explaining why populist political parties were not, not successful in the country was populist, uh, Portuguese people are not populist, so they don't like populist uh, political parties or populist uh, candidates. So the first thing to do was to, to try to uh, test this uh, uh, guess uh, of uh, considerable difference in terms of political culture between the Portuguese and the rest of the European electorates. The second question uh, uh, that uh, the extent research was able to uh, answer so far is which factors are associated with the expression of populist attitudes in Portugal? But basically what we... Uh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Basically, what this question deals with is which parts of the society are more um, likely to display and to express populist attitudes. Then we have the third question. Uh, how do populist citizens vote in the absence of a blatant, blatant populist option in the ballot? This question also has to do with uh, discussion, a discussion within society as um, and to a specific hypothesis stating that perhaps populist par uh, uh, citizens, they do not vote, they prefer to abstain because when they look at the um, plethora of political parties offered as options in a specific ballot, within a specific election, they do not find the party that actually represented. The, so they might prefer to just not turn out to vote, they might just prefer to abstain. And uh, uh, um, a paper that I wrote with John Casella uh, tried to tackle this question as well. Uh, a fourth question, what are the patterns of political participation of populist citizens? Are they less or more prone to political participation on the one hand? 
and which types of political participation. Less institutionalized, less structured, more, um, more uh, protest political participation, um, and last but not the least, to what extent can we talk about populist citizens as, again, an homogeneous group, or are differences <coughs> within this spectrum of citizens that display high levels of populist attitudes? Okay, let's uh, now um, deal with the first question uh, uh, having to do with the incidence of the populist attitudes in Portugal. What I, I, I am showing you now are, um, is a series of data that I, I used in uh, uh, two uh, outlets, uh, a survey report and a paper I wrote <coughs> with Elisabetta de Giorgi on the exceptionality of the Portuguese case. And what we can see with this data is that in 2018 and even in early 2019, there was no exceptionality in Portugal in terms of populist attitudes. Okay, attitudes, uh, populist attitudes was were as widespread in Portugal as in Italy, as in Greece, as in Spain, and only uh, and even so more widespread in Portugal than in a few Western democracies, such as, for instance, Germany or the UK, or even Sweden. So there was no, as we suspected, no exceptionality in Portugal in terms of political culture. The Portuguese were not less populist than their European counterparts. So the reasons for the failure of uh, populist parties had to be found elsewhere. Second question having to do who, who are the populists, right? Who are the populist citizens? Uh, was uh, dealt uh, uh, by uh, Jean Cancela and myself in this 2020 paper. We studied a series of factors that the literature showed that could have an impact uh, uh, in the, the likelihood of expressing populist attitudes. The first, uh, the first uh, um, hypothesis is the losers of globalization hypothesis. What does this mean? People that were, uh, to a certain extent, uh, put in a bad place in economic terms due to the advent of globalization would be more likely to uh, advocate and to express populist ideas. Well, in Portugal, that's not the case. What we show here is that people with a less stable work situation people from lower social classes and people with a lower education levels are not more prone to express populist attitudes than uh, people that are in a better point uh, in the social uh, tissue, okay? So the losers of globalization hypothesis was not confirmed by our data. Then we had a look at the uh, relationship with uh, um, the uh, specific performance of political institutions, okay? Namely, this, the appraisal of the general situation, of the national economy, the appraisal of the performance of the government, of the Portuguese executive, and the performance of the European Union institutions. And here we found something interesting. Yes, People who are, who are unhappy with the way both uh, national and supranational institutions work are indeed more likely to express populist attitudes. So people who are not happy with uh, 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 how uh, things are dealt both at the national level and at the international level are now more prone to express people-centrism anti-elitism and this claim for the popular, popular sovereignty to be uh, restored. Then uh, as well and I had a look at the relationship between populist attitudes and uh, a left-wing, uh, right-wing ideology. Uh, and what we saw is that uh, um, unlike what, what uh, the literature on the Portuguese case would suggest, Left-wing uh, citizens were, are not more populist than, than right-wing citizens in the Portuguese uh, case, nor the other way around. 
right-wing citizens are not more populist than left-wing citizens. But those citizens, citizens that are placed or that place themselves at the extremes of the ideological spectrum, they are very left-wing or very right-wing, are more populist than people that place themselves at the center of the ideology spectrum. Okay? And then uh, we also find out, unsurprisingly, that uh, citizens who have a party identification, who, who can uh, identify a party that they like, that they feel represents their ideas in the party system, they are, of course, less populist than people that uh, do not feel close to a uh, party. Interestingly enough, because populism is uh, um, not only but also about criticizing the political sphere and politics as, as, as a whole, uh, actually populist citizens are not disinterested uh, of what happens in the political realm. In fact, populist citizens are more interested in uh, uh, politics than those who, with lower levels of uh, populist attitudes. Okay, uh, interesting question, or at least João and I believed it would be. Uh, who do populist citizens vote for where there's no viable populist party in uh, the political system in the, the ballot? João and I tested a series of hypotheses on this. First, we expected that uh, people with higher populist attitudes would vote for uh, um, those political parties in Portugal that are slightly populist. Okay? Of course, in 2019 or until 2019, we did not have in Portugal a blatantly uh, popul a populist party, but we know uh, via empirical work, for instance, uh, 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 carried out by Marco Lisi and Enrico Borghetto, uh, that some parties are more, were more populist than others. And, uh, for instance, Bloco de Esquerda and CDU were slightly populist vis-à-vis uh, uh, -vis, uh, mainstream parties such as PS or PSD. Okay? So our, uh, our expectation was that uh, populist uh, uh, citizens would vote, would have higher odds of voting for uh, these parties with uh, 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 partial uh, uh, um, adoption of the populist uh, ideology. And what we see is that that's indeed the case, but only for general elections, only for legislative elections. Of course, we also expected that populist citizens would be uh, less prone to vote for the government, to vote for the incumbent, incumbent party, to support the party currently in, uh, in government. And that's indeed the case, but again, only for legislative elections. Uh, we also expected that people with higher levels, levels of populist attitudes would uh, be more likely to vote for new political parties, for new competitors, because these new political parties could try to sell themselves as not being a part of the establishment, as being new and, uh, to some extent, different or even anti-establishment, but this, is not, this was not the case. And then, we tested the hypothesis that higher levels of populism within the citizenry would uh, uh, lead to higher odds of not turning out to vote, of abstaining. And again, this is not the case. Uh, ir because uh, irrespectively of the levels of populist attitudes, the odds of not turning out to vote, the odds of abstaining are very high throughout our sample. <clears throat> uh, uh, third question, uh, do um, populist citizens participate uh, politically and how do they participate? Uh, this paper I prepared uh, last year shows that um, higher levels of populist attitudes are linked with, with higher odds of having been active in a political party. This actually was a at first, it was a weird result. Uh, my, my, my expectation was that there would be, public citizens would be less prone to having been involved in a political party. We are still using pre-Chega data, right? And the, 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 the 
uh, possible interpretation of this result is perhaps some of these people were indeed involved with political parties uh, during their lifespan and were to some extent disenchanted by the way these political parties function inside and this might to some extent reinforce the anti-elitism sentiment of those citizens. We also saw, or in this case I also saw, that populist citizens are more prone to, or very prone to belong to associations, to sign petitions, to participate in demonstrations, to boycotting specific products or services or companies, and also uh, very uh, prone to being politi politically active online. So these data, along with the data uh, from the paper by the Jean Cassel and myself, show that populist citizens in Portugal in the pre chega period, in 2018 and 2019, were not detached from political participation, were not detached from the political realm. Okay? Last but not the least, uh, to what extent we can talk about uh, populist citizens the very same way populists talk about the people, understanding it as a mono monolithical and <clears throat> homogeneous uh, category. Well, the results of this paper I prepared with Maisa Lima, and which is going to be published very soon, shows that we cannot. We cannot talk about populist citizens as being uh, equal to one another. What Maisa and I uh, did was a uh, cluster analysis of data, uh, survey data, uh, related to or pertaining only to uh, citizens that we defined as highly populist, those who score very high in the populist uh, attitude scale. And they correspond to uh, about 40% of our general sample. And uh, we uh, carried out this cluster analysis focusing on these, the attitudes of those citizens regarding elites, uh, namely the media, uh, non-political elites, because uh, attitudes toward political elites are, of course, already embedded within the concept of populism itself. So basically, the elites that we studied were the media, um, uh, business associations, uh, um, um, large companies, and the banking and financial system. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, these, uh, uh, the inclusion of the attitudes towards these types of uh, cultural and financial elites has to do with uh, uh, literature saying that left-wing populism is uh, defined first and foremost by the high levels of distrust and disdain towards these specific types of non-political uh, non -political elites. We also had a look at uh, attitudes toward uh, specific minorities. In this case, we looked at attitudes towards immigrants and towards homosexuals. Uh, uh, the inclusion of these uh, um, attitudes has to do with the fact that literature also tells us that the exclusionary type of populism or the right-wing uh, uh, populism is characterized by the exclusion of specific categories from the, uh, um, from the concept of true people or good people. And immigrants and uh, homosexuals in some circumstances, or in the Portuguese says, the case I would say the gypsies as well, are not inc included in the concept of Portuguese uh, uh, for, for the Portuguese speaking uh, uh, crowd here. And, uh, uh, by carrying out this cluster re uh, analysis, what we saw is the existence of three specific subtypes of uh, populist attitudes or populist citizens in Portugal. The first one, uh, uh, cluster one, are uh, defined as being closer to a, 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 a simple and pure anti-political elite uh, populism. The second one, uh, um, groups, uh, citizens that are closer to uh, right-wing populism, negative attitudes towards immigrants, negative attitudes towards uh, um, specific uh, minorities, such as uh, homosexuals in this case. And then the third cluster has to do uh, or in, encapsulates those that are closer 
to a left-wing populism with a rather, uh, uh, <clears throat> rather high levels or rather low levels of trust in uh, um, cultural and uh, financial uh, elites such as uh, banks, uh, the financial system, uh, uh, and large corporations. Of course, I say that these uh, groups are closer or close to this specific ideal types, um, uh, anti-political elite, right-wing populism, and uh, left-wing populism, because our data does not show a complete uh, match between the theoretical categories and the empirical uh, uh, results. Um, and uh, this, is, this is, for instance, exemplified by the fact that the group of populist citizens that we called uh, right-wing populist, they are not right-wing, they are actually placed exactly at the middle of the uh, uh, ideological scale. Uh, they score 5 on average on a 0 to 10 scale, in which 0 is left and 10 is right. So that's why I use here the, 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 the brackets, because it's not uh, actually, they are not actually right-wing. They are closer to this right-wing type of populist, but they are not uh, indeed right-wing. In the same vein, uh, uh, those that we called uh, right, uh, left-wing populists uh, um, are not uh, left, but they are actually just center-left. Okay? They are not as extreme in ideological terms as we could perhaps expect. Other interesting things that we found when uh, taking care of characterizing these three clusters is that the right-wing populism is more uh, uh, frequent uh, amongst men and also amongst older uh, citizens. Okay? Uh, social class is not relevant here. Uh, a party identification is actually relevant in the sense that uh, and this was intriguing as well, that left-wing populists are less likely to uh, feel that there's a party that represents them than the other, the other groups. Other interesting uh, uh, findings, uh, this time more uh, related to political attitudes and political assessments, uh, these uh, left-wing populists are those who are less satisfied with uh, the way the Portuguese democracy works. Uh, they do reject uh, a government by a strong leader without parliament being uh, involved and without elections being called, but they are those who are more prone to defend direct democracy tools such as referenda. So, what do we know about Portuguese uh, attitudes in Portugal? their correlates, their impacts. Uh, first, uh, populist attitudes are and were in this period, 2018-2019, as wide, widespread in Portugal as in other European democracies, especially those in Southern Europe. Also, uh, the expression of populist attitudes was not higher amongst those we uh, define as losers of globalization, the poorer, the less educated, those with a less stable work situation. But um, first and foremost, amongst those uh, that hold and express a negative or pessimistic or even declaristic view of the performance of both national and supranational political institutions. Third, uh, uh, we uh, found that the expression of populist attitudes was more frequent amongst those without party identification, this was not a surprise, and those that are placed at bo both extremes of the ideological spectrum, the very left-wing citizens and the very right-wing citizens. Also, oops, there is something, uh, okay, I'll try to, to, to fix this uh, uh, with my oral presentation. So, uh, populist attitudes were also linked with higher levels of interest in politics and to several instances of political participation. We also showed that populist citizens were not, as suspected, more likely to abstain, but they were actually more likely to vote for the relatively 
uh, even if poorly, uh, uh, populist uh, uh, parties uh, um, at their at their uh, disposal in uh, in 2018 and 2019, uh, and of course less likely to support the government in uh, legislative elections. And uh, 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 the most uh, uh, recent uh, uh, finding uh, of this stream of research shows that populist citizens are not all alike. We uh, can find those that are closer to the right-wing uh, 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 type or subtype of populism with uh, less positive or more negative attitudes towards gays and immigrants, for instance. Others are closer uh, to the left-wing uh, subtype of populism with strong levels of disdain and distrust of uh, economic and financial elites and others still display just a very simple uh, form of populism only focused on uh, 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 criticizing the elites and wanting to put uh, people at the center of the political, of the political um, processes with no clear links to either exclusionism or anti-capitalism. So this was my presentation for today. Thank you for your attention. And apologies for my throat not functioning as well as it should. Thank you very much.